Now, before I get started, let me say something. I'm a Christian, but I'm an entry-level Christian. I've uh, been through every level of life. I'm not a fake person. I am an imperfect soldier for Christ. That's what I am. Keyword, imperfect. Where I started from was my father making $5 a day. I come from nothing. I had a severe stuttering problem throughout school. I flunked out of school. I'm on my third marriage. I lost everything I ever owned twice. I've been homeless and lived in a car for three years. My father was a coal miner. My father made $5 a day with five kids. I'm the youngest of five. A lot of you are young in this room. I want to teach you something that I learned that changed my life also. Everything that changed my life came from God. We talking about next level? I'm finna show you how to get there. I've been debating on how I was gonna do this, but I thought the best way to go about this is just tell you my story. And in my story, maybe you can see some of yourself. Listen, man, anybody can be successful, but you gotta understand something. It's hard. It's hard, man. You can take all the courses you want. It's hard. You can go down there to the church and hold your hands in a prayer circle. When you get through praying, it's gonna be hard. You go to school, you can get all the degrees you want. When you get them degrees and you hang them on the wall, if you wanna be successful, it's gonna be hard. It's hard being successful. That's the first thing you need to understand. I was telling you that I lived in a car for three years. In my 30s, I was homeless. I was homeless based off of a decision I made. October 8th, 1985, I walked in a comedy club for the very first time. Never been in a comedy club, but I had been writing jokes for a dude taking my jokes going to a comedy club. He was paying me $10 for it. I had never been to a comedy club, had never heard of a comedy club. I was writing for a buddy of mine named A.J. Jamal. He would pay me 10 bucks a joke. One day, I was writing some jokes for him, and I was over his house to drop him off, and this girl named Gladys Jacobs came over to the house, and she said, you the dude that's writing the jokes for A.J. Jamal? I said, yeah. She said, he the funniest dude at the comedy club. I said, at the what? She said, he's the funniest dude at the comedy club. I'm 27. I've never heard of a comedy club. Now, all my life, I wanted to be on TV. I'm going to tell you that story a little bit later. But I just said, man, at the comedy club, she said, you should come. She said, why don't you tell the jokes yourself? Now, I'm thinking, I said, man, this could be what I've been asking God my whole life. See, some of you in this spot where you keep asking God, what do I do next? What's my next move? You know the hardest thing about your life? Trying to figure it out. Ain't that hard? <laughs> but do you know that you ain't supposed to do that? Do you know that God already designed you for a purpose in life? And if you would just simply ask God what it was, he could guide you to it and the search for what I'm supposed to do will be over, but oh no, we so busy figuring it out. I got news for you. How to do something? The how-to is none of your business. That's what I never knew. So I was just wanting, man, to just be on TV since I was a little kid, and this girl said, come to the comedy club. So I go to the comedy club with her. She said, we gonna go Tuesday night. I want you to sign up to perform next week. And then I want you to see how I go first. I said, cool. So I went, I walked in the comedy club, I signed up for the following week, and I sit down, supposed to be 10 dudes performed. Nine of them went up. Now I ain't laughed all night. She said, you're not laughing at none of these jokes. You know why? Because what they were doing was my actual gift. It was the thing I've been doing my whole life. So. I wasn't laughing at their jokes because I knew everything they was going to say and I knew everything they should have said where the joke would have really been funny. 
So I'm just sitting there just a student, man. So it got to the 10th guy, and they called his name, and nobody went up. And they called his name again. They said, well, looks like number 10 isn't here. We're going to go to next week's list. Steve Harvey, come on up. I looked at that girl, Gladys, I said, this crazy. I said, is somebody in here got the same name I got? <laughs> she said, you really can't be this stupid. <laughs> she said, boy, that's you. I run up on stage, I ain't got nothing. First thing I say to the audience is, hey, I appreciate y'all clapping, but I ain't supposed to be here, I'm on next week's show. So the girl Gladys yelled out, tell him about when you was boxing. So on the way down, I had told her this story about boxing. So I did the boxing joke. Mike Tyson loves to fight. Yes. He don't care if it's in the ring or out the ring, man or woman. Mike just wants to get it on. <laughs> and if you don't think that's true, you just ask that heavyweight fighter Mitch Green. They, these people was in the flow laughing. So then, I ain't had nothing else, so I had wrote some jokes for my buddy A.J. Jamal that I hadn't sold to him yet, so I said, well, hell, let me try these. So I did them jokes, they died laughing, they bought me off stage, they bought all 10 of us up on stage, they had a clap off. That night, I won the clap off, I won amateur night, October 8th, 1985, they paid me $50. I get in the car, I'm 40 minutes from my house, Gladys is driving me home. I'm crying the entire time. I can't stop crying. She said, what you crying for? It's just $50. I said, no, you don't understand. This ain't $50. I've been born tonight. This ain't $50. This God answering a prayer of mine that I've been praying for 20 years. This ain't $50. This is what I'm gonna do the rest of my life. I went to work the next day, October 8th, 1985, and quit my job. I have done nothing since October 8th, 1985, except one thing. I've been telling these here jokes. That's all I've ever done. That gift that God gave me. You know, the Bible says your gift will make room for you. It'll make room for you. See, if you're not doing your gift, you're wasting your time. Your gift will make room for you. You got to identify your God-given gift. If you don't identify your gift, you're going to waste your time. Telling jokes is my gift. So even as a motivational speaker, I use my gift. Nothing's more boring than sitting up listening to somebody talk for 45 minutes and you ain't laughed in 45 minutes. <laughs> Listen, if I want to, I could turn this into a comedy show. I probably everybody in here be throwing up. <laughs> if I want to. 1968, came off school off of a summer vacation. I'm 10 years old. The assignment the teacher had was everybody in the school class write your name on a piece of paper and what you want to be when you grow up. I wrote on my paper, I want to be on TV. That's what I wrote. That lady said, turn in your papers. She asked, she went around the room, called everybody's name up. You had to stand while she read your paper. She read off everybody's name. She saved me for last. She said, little Stevie, come to the front. I'm thinking, okay, this is it. I ain't never had a gold star in school in my life. I've never been recognized for academic achievements in my life. I've never got an award of any kind in my life. Here I come. Little Stevie coming to the front. I got a belt that's too big, it's tied around me twice. They used to call me tater chip in school because I was shaped like a potato chip. <laughs> and I walked up there and I'm standing in front of class. Now I told you a minute ago I had a severe stuttering problem in school. I could not talk outside of my house. 
I studied severely. I thought this woman was going to give me a gold star because I figured nobody else in the class had wrote I want to be on TV but me. So mine must be the best answer of all of them. So I'm standing up there and that lady started in on me. She didn't call me up there to give me no gold star. She called me to the front to humiliate me. And that lady did me. She said, why did you put something like this on your paper? Now, you've called me to the front. You know I have a stuttering problem. You know I can't talk. So she started, why did you write this on your paper? I, 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 I. Who in your family ever been on TV? I, 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 I. Who in this school ever been on TV? I, 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 I. Who in this neighborhood has ever been on television? I, I, I. She said, why would you write something like that on your paper? And look at you standing there, you can't even talk. I was crushed. Why would you write that on your paper? You can't even talk. This is a teacher. You're supposed to be shaping and molding my mind. We pay you to educate. Why would you write something like that on your paper? You will never be on TV. Every Christmas, I send her a flat screen TV. Because I don't want her to miss me. I wanted her to see what God had done for me. The fact that they don't see the dream the fact that they don't see what you can be has nothing to do with what God can do. Nothing at all. I don't care who you are, go cut your TV on. You cut your TV on seven days a week. That little black boy with the studying problem, he all over that TV. That little black boy messed around and became a TV star. She didn't see it. How many times have you shared a dream with somebody and they didn't see it? I heard somebody talk about the importance of education and education is critical. You have to be educated. You have to be well read. You gotta be well versed. There's no way around it. I'm gonna make a statement. I don't know how it's gonna fly in this room. But here I go. Education is not the most important thing in your life. It's not. I spoke at a school one time and I said that the principal of the school came up and had me removed from the stage. I was just trying to help his students. Education is not the most important thing. Do you know how many people I know with education that ain't working? You know how many people I know with degrees ain't got no job? Do you know how many people I know with multiple degrees ain't making no money? The single most important thing in your life is your dream. It's your dream. It's what you dream about. It's in your Bible. It says a man without a dream or vision shall perish. They don't mention education in the Bible. The University of Jamaica is not in the Bible. Without dreams and visions, you can't make it. If you got no dream, if you got no vision, you're sunk. You're done. I'm sorry. I'm just giving you the basics of how to be successful. This is how I got here. I'm going to give you something that changed my life. A very short scripture changed my life. You have not, cause you ask not. It's in James 4 and 2. Uh oh, listen to me. I can't even tell you how big that is. Look at me. This is the coldest thing I'm gonna tell you today. You have not, cause you ask not. It's that simple. Most people don't have the life of their dreams cause you ain't never asked God could you have it. You've been trying to do it yourself. You've been trying to figure it out for yourself. How that's been working out for you. 
kind of crazy, ain't it? I just told you earlier, you can't figure it out. Ain't no scripture nowhere tell you to figure it out. What you trying to figure your life out for? It ain't yours. You ain't make it. You ain't the creator. You ain't got nothing to do with tomorrow. You can't change the past. So what you tripping with your life for? You have not cause you ask not. Y'all ain't never asked God could you be rich. Most people ain't rich today cause you ain't never asked God could you be rich. I asked God every day when I was homeless. My God is faithful and my God is powerful and my God is in charge. At the lowest point of my life, I asked God every day could I be rich. You know why? Cause I had had it up to here with being poor. I lived in a car, dog. I ain't had no backyard. I ain't had no TV. I ain't had no phone. I ain't got no bathroom. I ain't got no sink. I asked God every day, could I be rich? I told God, if you let me make it, when I get there, I'm gonna, every chance I get, I'm gonna tell everybody it was you. Here I am, and it was him. It was him. Now you got another route you want to take, go ahead. See, the thing about having faith is you don't need nobody's permission. You don't have to take out a loan. You don't have to get accepted into the course. You can start your faith today. You can start your walk with God today. You ain't got to clear it with nobody. There's plenty of openings. He's available. All you got to do is go. I got rich, and I'm not bragging, but I'm just telling you, I got rich because I asked. It is an amazing scripture, man. If you would only ask, well, Steve, what do I ask for? Everything. You want a relationship with God where God is not only your king, he's your companion, he's your guide, He's your friend. You know how you can tell your friend anything? That's the relationship he's looking for. You ain't got to go to church to get that. You had that at your house. You can have a relationship with God on your own. You, you got to have that, man. You got to start asking God for big stuff. Stop wasting God's time with all this little stuff. Lord, help me make my rent. Don't he always? Has it ever occurred to you that maybe you should ask God for a mortgage? You ever thought of that? You don't think God got mortgage money? But you know why you don't ask God for the mortgage? Because you keep getting in the way. It says you have not because you ask not. But you say, well, I don't have a job that uh, dictates I would afford a mortgage. I don't make enough money. I got bad credit. You think God don't know that? He said ask. You have not cause you ask not. So you rule yourself out of the mortgage simply because you won't ask. Just go ahead and ask God for the house. You think God don't know you need a better job? You block your own blessing cause you get in the way of the answer. Just ask God for big stuff. Lord Jesus, help me get out of debt in seven years. Why would you ask God to get you out of debt in seven years? Who you think you talking to? Ain't this the same God that made heaven and earth in six days? Why would it take him seven years to get you out of debt? He made heaven and earth in six days. You need seven years from God to get you out of debt. <laughs> You're crazy. God do big stuff. Ask God for something big. Now, here's the second. The next thing you need to do, Oprah been on TV for 30 years telling people about vision boards. If you don't have a vision board, if you don't have your dreams written down, that's the other reason you don't have. I just gave you the two main reasons why people don't have the life of their dreams. Number one, you don't ask God for it. And number two, you won't write it down. It has to be written. You have to write it down. It's a principle of success. Anybody can be successful. You just have to know the principles of success. See, I know the principles of success. I could stop and go start selling tomatoes 
and I could go make a lot of money selling tomatoes. You know why? Because I know the principles of success. The second principle you need to know is you have to write it down. But that's the scripture though. That's Habakkuk 2 and 2. Write the vision and make it plain so that he who reads it will run to it. And even though it tarry, wait for it. For surely it will come at an appointed time. I don't know but four five, but I know four five good ones don't. Everything I've ever dreamed and asked God for, I done wrote it down. Everything I ever had had come from a piece of paper. And everything extra I got come from his grace. I got stuff, he gave me stuff more than on the paper. But see, you ain't got no time for that though. So here's the exercise I want all of you to do. I'm just telling you how to be successful. This is how I did it. I ain't, I ain't gonna take no course. I don't have no, I flunked out of school. I have no education. Albert Einstein has a quote that changed my life. I'm gonna give it to you. Cause this is for everybody in this room. Cause it's something that we all have and you may have never understood it. Albert Einstein said, imagination is everything. It's the preview to life's coming attractions. I want you to listen to me now cause this, this, this gonna be my last thing. But this is so good, man. If you can get this right here, this can change it for you. Imagination is everything. It's the preview to life's coming attraction. You know what that means? That means everything you see in this world came from somebody's imagination. Everything. The Wright brothers said, man, I want to fly like a bird. They laughed them out to gym. See, you've been thinking all this time that your imagination was just some hocus pocus. It ain't. It ain't. I'm finna teach you something now. I want you to hear me on this one. Because this is the most powerful thing that I can tell you today. Albert Einstein had that quote. But Albert Einstein took that quote out the Bible. Albert Einstein took the second half of my mother's favorite scripture. My mother's favorite scripture is, and you've all heard it, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Oh, I'm in front of the right crowd. Now, I usually tell that to people, they be going, what, where's that? <laughs> faith is the substance of things hoped for. What better message than faith and hope? While you sitting in this room trying to get to the next level, listen to me. There will be no more levels for you unless you get to the next level of your faith. There ain't no more levels for you, partner. You where you at. Your imagination is a preview of a coming attraction God has for you. That's what your imagination is. That's what it's been this whole time. All them times you've been imagining being rich, that wasn't just up there. God put it in your head because that's what he got for you. That big house you keep wanting, God put it in your head because that's what God got for you. That promotion on the job you keep imagining, that's what God put in your head because that's what he got for you. When you keep dreaming of taking a summer vacation somewhere, that's because that's what God got for you. When you dream of retiring one day, having retirement income, it's in your imagination because God put it there because that's a coming attraction that God has for you. That's what your imagination is. You've been tripping. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Now check this out. The second half of that scripture. And the evidence of things not seen. Here go the lesson. Your imagination is the evidence of things not seen. You know why it's the evidence of things not seen? Because your imagination, you're the only one can see it. Nobody 
can see your imagination but you. But God places what he has for you in your imagination. After you become an adult, it shouldn't be hope no more. This ought to start turning into some faith. You got to go, man, I done hoped hard enough and God gave it to me. What's the matter with calling it faith? Quit hoping, man. Turn it into faith. Faith is the belief in things that you cannot see. You got to ask God for something. Remember I told you, write it down. Ask for something from God. You don't know how in the world you're going to get it. You know what's on my vision board? Things I have no idea how I'm going to get. That's what ought to be on your vision board. You know how many times you done wrote your imagination off? You know the danger about your imagination? You tell it to the wrong people. That's the danger. You want to kill a big dream? Tell it to a small-minded person. Boy, they'll shoot it down every time, won't they? You know how many wonderful ideas you've had. Stuff that God gave to you, you thought was, man, this is it. You went in there to your friends and your family and you shared it with them and they shot it down. You know why they shot it down? Because they ain't see it. You know why they ain't see it? Because God ain't give it to them. Because he put it in your imagination. If he'd have wanted them to imagine it, he'd have put it in their head. That's why people can't see what you're going to be. That's why that teacher, that teacher mind, look at you, you're standing there. You can't even talk. How they going to put somebody like you on TV? Well, lady, what you didn't know was I wasn't going to stutter forever. You didn't know God was going to get me over the stuttering, did you? You didn't see it. Because nobody else from 112th Street ever been on TV. You ain't think I'd be the first. You know why? Because you ain't see it. But God didn't put me being on TV in her head. He put it in my, he put it in my head. I was just dumb enough to think it could happen. When you going to get dumb enough to think that your imagination is real? If I was you, I'd hurry up and get that stupid. I really would. I know this is a motivational conference. I know you want to hear about some book you can go buy and read. You already got the book. It's at your house. It's the one with the dust on it. Do you know everything you need to know about success is in there? Every self-help book today is written off the principles that's in the Bible. Now, is it good to buy these other books? Yes, it is. But if you got a Bible, it's in there. But if you want to buy a book that's based on the Bible, go buy this book called The Magic of Thinking Big. Faith without works is dead. You have not because you ask not. Faith is something of things hoped for. Write the vision and make it plain. I gave you four right there that changed your life. Somebody say, well, if you're going to mention your God, you need to stop all these jokes. That's what I do. I tell jokes. I tell jokes for a living. You know how much money I done made telling jokes? I told the dude when he hired me. I use humor because I hold people's attention with humor. I'm telling you, somebody going to find something wrong with it. Somebody always finds something wrong with what you're doing, even if it's okay. Somebody always. Man, don't you know I'm used to that? I don't appreciate him talking about the Lord that much. Well, okay, well, don't have me back. I didn't like the jokes. We're here for motivation. I didn't like the jokes. Go on social media right now. They dogging me about something. But you know what? It don't matter what they say, because what they say don't matter. Who is these people talking about me? Don't none of them people that's talking about me ever met me. They thumb gangsters. <laughs> hey, listen, I've told you a lot of things. I hope you grasp some of it. I want you to know that I was really honored to be here. I pray. I ask God what to go tell the people. I come out here without the paper. And I tell you what God told me to tell you. I hope I've encouraged you. I hope I've reminded you of some things. I hope I've shared some light. I hope that you all live the life of your dreams because it's possible. God is in the make your dream come true business. I told you what he did for me. What he did for me, he will surely do for you.
Hey, I love y'all. Thank y'all very much. I've discovered that your career is what you paid for. Your calling is what you made for. Sharing my story, if it helps another person get to where they want to be in life, wherever that is, I think that's, that's, that's a pretty good deal. I mean, I've evolved over the years. I've never been afraid to reinvent myself.